It's time to go racing at the short track of Iowa, which is the last race of round number one. After tonight's race, we know four drivers, championship chances will disappear. And on the pole is Jeff Wright looking for his first win of the season. Ron Lamarck in the 51 to his outside. Then third, you have John West. Fourth is Jake Galloway and rang out the top 500 powers. One of the drivers below the cut line, sixth, Michael Sanders, trying to get above that cut line after tonight. John Gambit is seventh, Alexander Rowan, eighth, a chaser. Then John Speed for another chaser, ninth, and James Krogan also below the cut line. He rounds out the top ten. For the rest of you, you've got Laura Delano and Cub Luigi. Then there's Roland Cook. He's below the cut line. And Joe Sandrovich. Isaac Nichols and points there coming into this race. Jennifer Buford. You have Max Harrison and Levi Shones. Jim Gambit and Joe Jefferson. Then there's Luke Ernie with the new State Farm Sponsorship and Christian Parker. Then Eli Bright Chaser and Jonathan Raines. They have Juan Garcia and Michael Ferris. Then Justin Zidell and Patrick Smith. Tim Randolph and Steve Larker. They have Gatlin Downey and Jake Jefferson. Adam McDowell and Jose Fernandez. Then there's Colton Yeo and Alex Stewart. Steve Morgan and Justin Heath. Then there's Daniel Lopez and Jason Larker. And finally, rang up the field. TJ Hanley in the 44. Who's outside the 81 of Wyatt Walker. That's your 4 car lineup. For the last race of round number one of the chase, let's go to track sign and get the command to fire the engines. Gentlemen, start your engine! Take a nice deep breath, buddy. Settle in, relax. Give your seatbelt slow tug and tug under steering wheel one more time for me. Good luck, bud. We'll see you at the end of the field. As the Ford cars roll off the starting grid, the four drivers below the cut line coming, coming into this race. James DeCroge in the 01, Roland Cook in the 40 er, in the 87, and they have Michael Sanders in the 60, and then Isaac Nichols in the 7. All below the cut line looking to get above. Pace car in 45 laps to determine round number two of the chase. We're racing green flag in the air. Alrighty, as they go through three and four for the first time, John West grabs the lead as they're making contact back there. Galloway into the wall with Roland Emmerich. They're going around. They save their cars. And we don't have a caution flag quite yet, but cars have been stacked up. They can see Isaac Nichols in the seven getting by down low. Michael Sayers in the six. He's trying to combine Nichols now on the apron, and they've kept it going straight. We have no caution flag as of yet, but there, are, there is some damage to the 11 and 51. As meanwhile, up front, cars have gotten away because they were down low or ahead of it. Now the pack's very, really been spread out. There's the A7 Rolling Cook stuck up top. Back to 17th. There's Jeff Beeford, your points there, 19th. Eli Bright breaks his way into the top 20s. Levi shown to the 15 falls backwards. I'm surprised we did not have a crash right there. That was a great job by those drivers. Look at Nichols stuck up top now. He had been gaining points there, but now he's going to lose all those points. He's up top three wide now. Once again, the 11 and 51 get a little close. And Rick and Galloway not racing too friendly right now. DeCurl gets below the cut line by a lot, so he's trying to get up there. He's going for a position eighth. Kaluji seventh. Joe Sandro sixth as the front five gotten away. They're single foul. John Gambit. There's John to be for one of your chasers. Jeff Wright, Hunter Powers, and John West leads. So in the front five, we have one chaser. He's fourth. As for the race lead, Hunt Powers on John West. Okay, they and I went way up the racetrack, and Powers able to clear down the backstretch. Jeff Bright going for a second after starting on pole. Fell back, but because of what happened there, he's not going to fall back a lot. Uh, and they fell back to the back half of the top five, and here he's fighting back. He's going for that race lead. Now down the front stretch with Jonathan Buford with a bigger move. He's down to the bottom lane, three wide underneath that five car. Buford wants to get a pair lead a lap, get a bonus point in case something maybe catastrophic happens here at the front because we saw it last season. A caution came out towards the end. It looked like the front three had the field covered. Caution came out. Whoa, it really it got everyone close together. They might be four wide. Come off the corner. A little bit of contact there. Jeff Bright and Hunter Powers run up against each other, but they keep going straight. B for Desley left. That's a bonus point right there. Oh, Gambit goes around with Powers and Jeff Bright. Caution is out. And three strong contenders at the front of Crash. Jonathan B for leads back in the 28. Hard crash for Powers. Gambit and Bright. Buford leads back. John West second. Joe Sandro's third. Sanders up to fourth. And DeCurlgan rounds at the top five. As the five of Jeff Bright with heavy damage. Where's the 38? There is John Gambit. And Hunter Powers also has a ton of damage. Let's see what happened for caution number one. Racing up inside the top five. And three cars go spinning. 
From what I've seen with this angle, it looks like Jeff Brand, the five in the middle, he may have gotten into the corner a little bit too hot and maybe got into the back right there, John Gamma, and spun that 38 around and up the track they go and into each other hard and into the wall hard. And power is sideways up there. They throw the yellow flag. That's caution number one. Luckily, he keeps it up against the wall and doesn't get any chasers or anyone else involved. Everyone able to keep it going uh, down low. So tough break there for three non-chasers running up inside the top five. All with a realistic shot of winning the race at that point. But now they're going to be damaged and possibly even slower. Jonathan Buford was ahead of that. One of your chasers leads us back to the yellow flag. And he'll also lead us back to the green flag. Coming back for the restart in lap number 12. Jonathan Buford out front. All four to cars to the left in the race. So your chaser, Jonathan Buford, out front of this race. John Weston, second. Joe Sandro's third. And two drivers below the cut line. Michael Sanders, fourth. And James Kerrigan, fifth. And then Cole Luigi in sixth. Luke Rainey, seventh. Jeff right back to eighth, but with some damage. Alexander Rose up to ninth. And Jake Galloway is tenth. Another car with a lot of damage. John Gammon, eleventh. There's Eli Bright, one of your higher up chasers. He's twelfth. For this restart, we're back racing. Green flag back out. Very, very uh, quick restart there for Buford. He got in the gas immediately. Gets a pretty good gap on the 89, but watch out for these non-chasers. They definitely, they want to get a win, and they're going to be driving harder. So if I'm a chaser, I might not push it too hard. Unless, of course, I'm Sanders or DeKerlgan, and I'm the outside looking in. I want to get a lap leg, get that bonus point. Joe Sandro's looking three wide. John Musk is going to clear for the race off of turn number four. West now back out front the 89. And Sandrovich up to second, that 20 car. He wants to win this season badly. Off the racetrack for the 20. Keeps underneath that 28 down the back stretch. John Wesley away. Yeah, that five Jeff Wright is definitely slower. He's holding up Ga Galway, it looks like right now, or they're pretty similar speeds. I think Galway can definitely get by here. Eli Bright's gone up to 11th as John Gamble's just free falling through the field with that damage that he has. Yeah, Galway's going to go for the ninth position on Jeff, and he's going to get it. Look at this. Three wide, three chasers. John three for Webb, top to Kurgan, going for third. Sanders falls back to fourth, and for the race lead, Jose Androvich in the 20. Going to be able to take it from John West as they enter turn three. Sandrovich takes the race lead. DeKerlgan trying to get up here and lead a lap for a bonus point. He's outside, remember, but we say he's pretty far out, so a win would be huge for him. He just wants to get up here and get into contention right now. It's, looks like the front was this front eight cars have pulled away. Galloway and Eli right bound for ninth. Eli's charging up to the front. One of your chasers trying to stay inside the top eight. Looks like he might get it done if he can just keep it, have a good result. Ninth place, that would be a great result for him. Just starting where he's starting, he just wants to keep it calm. And a solid, consistent, quiet day for Eli Bright. He just wants to keep it like that. Colucci in the 32 just missed out winning at California. Trying to get one in the target series. He's going for that second position as he falls to Krogan through. Can he steal that lap blood from the 01? Or can DeKrogan get around here and lead the lap? That would be both points we mentioned. Three wide for third. Luke Ray down low to the stripe. They come to Krogan by about half a car length. He leads the lap. That's a bonus point for him towards the chase. Yeah, Stairs also wants to get that done, but he's falling back in the 60. As up the track for the 01, he's going to fall back here as Josie Androge looks to the inside. Couldn't get it done there. Kaluji clears, your new race leader. John was back up to second. The 89 car looks pretty fast here tonight. Wouldn't be surprised if he was one that we saw in victory lane at the end of the night. For third, Luke Rainey trying to back up his win at All Cup with another win here. It would be his third of the season. It would be a statement heading into next season that he still hasn't in the target series. He needs more consistency and he can get it done. How about Eli Bryant, the 88? After getting to the ninth position. He's charging up to the front. He's caught this front eight pack. And John West got by for the race lead, pushed that 32 up the track, and Kaluji might fall back even more positions, although he did get a good run off the top side. He might be able to get clear of Luke Rainey. Code's in the Penzo Truck Series chase, which was last night, and he had a pretty hard time once he got to the top lane. Ooh, contact there between the 01 and the 20 down to the 28. They keep their car straight. When we mentioned Kaluji, he's in the truck chase, and after getting stuck on, oh, caution out. Caution is out. West leads us back with 26 to go. And a chaser involved. Roland Cook, Tim Randolph, and Gatlin Downey. Two chasers involved. The 52 pretty heavily damaged. The 87 has sun damage. He was outside looking in coming into this race. And this is going to throw a wrench in things as a caution comes out. And we're going to restart around halfway. John West out front. Code Luigi second. Your first chaser is Alexander Rowan fourth. So this is going to change things. The pack and I going to be back together. And a restart for John West. Let's see what happened around caution number two. Two chasers get some pretty heavy damage along with Tim Randolph.
Well, this happened all the way off of turn number two. They're three wide. Isaac Nichols trying to make up ground. Remember, we said he's outside looking in, but he's outside by just a few points, so he can definitely get in. And Tim ran off up the track in the L5. He gets hooked together for the A7. Cook, they go into the wall hard right here. And then Cook kind of comes off. Maybe Matt, the L5, spins him into the wall. They get their car straight again, but Cook is obviously visibly upset with Randolph spins them both into the wall, and then here comes Downey on the outside, committed, and he almost had it missed, and the old 5 just comes right there, and hard hit there is Adam McDowell, one of your chasers just missing it. Hunter Powers got some damage in the 14. The second crash, he's gotten damage in. Let's go on board the chasers that were around this first. Gatlin down in the 52, an innocent bystander in this. He was just riding along at the back. That's a tough break for Downey. He was in by a good amount, but with this damage, with this crash, if he retires or if he finishes back where he is, he might not make it. Rowan Cook in the A7 has now on board. He was one that started this. Let's look at it. So you can see the 5 kind of comes up, gets a norm right there, sends the A7 into the wall loop right there, and then he turns down, he keeps turning down to the O5. He's obviously upset with Tim Randolph about what he just did right there. Cook doesn't get hit, but he definitely has some damage, so I don't know how it's going to affect the handling of that car. He might still be mad at that O5. And Adam McDowell in the 16, one of your chasers back here at the back of the pack and just misses this crash. And McDowell had pretty good, uh, he had a pretty good gap over the bubble too, but he's been running poorly and right there just missed the L5. So those are definitely some positions gained that he can use because he needs them. He needs to finish, I would say at least top 25. Maybe he'd be fine because of with how many chasers are actually running not so hot. Back in front, the 89 of John West called Luigi second. And West will lead us back to the green flag gonna be around halfway so we're just about halfway through this race coming to restart lap number 24 still all forward to cars left in the race but how about two chasers that are involved in that crash are 42nd and 41st as of now so that's a tough break friend they have to try and gain positions in any way they can john west out front for this restart koluigi in second luke rainey third alexander Ruff fourth james krogan fifth then Joe San George is 6th, Jonathan Buford 7th, Michael Sanders in 8th, Eli Bright 9th, Century Start 10th, Jake Galloway has an issue that gives Lord Allow the 10th position. So issues for the 11 car, he'll pull off to the pit lane on the restart. We're back racing green flag back out for John West, lap number 24. I'll have to get an update on what that issue was in the 11 of Jake Galloway is obviously tough break for him. He's run inside the top 10 after getting damaged early on. He, that what, car still, caution is already out. Yellow is already out for an issue can't quite tell where it was. We'll have to see as they're racing back. And out in front, John West leads us back to the caution flag. So something must have happened to the 11 car to have caused that. I don't know. Maybe the old 5. I don't know what happened. So let's see what caused caution number 3. Quick caution after that restart. Let's see what happened. This is what caused the caution. Jake Galloway either doesn't think he has to go down pit road or something. Maybe he thinks he can kind of fix it there in the apron. And right here, the car stops as he missed pit lane. That's what brought the caution. A slow car on the racetrack stopped. They obviously did not want to risk that. A short track. So the yellow comes out for Galloway stepped on the racetrack. John West still out front leading laps. He leads back to the green flag once again. Time is ticking off the lap counter. Developing story here at Iowa. The caution came out for the 11 slow. McDowell was turned by the 99 Steve Morgan up into the outside wall and has taken that 16 out of this race and possibly out of chase contention with all the damage he's had. So McDowell, after saying may maybe if he finished top 25, he's going to finish last now. His chase chances have taken a hit. Now he has to rely on some others having not so great days. So McDowell out of the race here at Iowa. And it's going to shake this whole chase picture up. Let's see how it goes on the restart. John West is out front. Coming back to the restart, lap number 29. And as we mentioned, Adam McDowell out of the race in 42nd after contact with Steve Morgan under the yellow flag. Galway a lap down, 40 cars on the lead lap. John West in the 89 is out front. Koluigi in second, Luke Rainey is third, Alexander Ruff fourth, and James Kerrigan fifth. Those are two chasers inside the top five. Then Joe San George in sixth, Jonathan Buford seventh, Michael Sanders eighth, Eli Bright ninth, and Lord Allen rounds out the top ten. That's three more chasers. So we got about half of the chaser, or uh, half of the top ten is chasers. As the green flag is back waving, we're back racing. John West steps on the gas once again. Another great restart of that 89 car. He's been up front for so many restarts here tonight. Second one in a row. He just had to negotiate. And down the back stretch. Luigi has a run. He's trying to get to the inside of the 89s. They hit three and four. No moves yet inside the top ten. Everyone keeping orderly for now. Luigi now looks on John West down the front stretch. Can he get there? 
He's right there as the bow for third. Chaser underneath the non-chaser. Luke Graham up top. Alexander Rowe to third. As Luigi looks once again for the race lead. 16 laps to go. They're coming to 15 to go this time. Alexander Rowe's taking the third position. Luigi still cannot get around John West. The 89 car doing a pretty good job out front. I mentioned I would not be surprised if we saw the 89 out front. And in victory land at the end of the day. Is that pretty... Fantastic car, 15 to go. Can anyone find a way around the 89? Front two Chevrolets. Third is a Dodge. Fourth a Chevy. Fifth a Toyota. Takes a while to go back and find your first Ford, which is Michael Sanders. Back here in eighth. Eli Bright in ninth. You see all these chasers back here for them. In fact, are Ballon Harz. Road looks for second. Another chaser trying to fight his way forward. Inside the 32 is the enter turn one. He might get to the inside of the A9. West way up the racetrack. Alexander Rowe to the inside. He's going to try and take it down the back. The field spread out back there. I don't know if something happened. Caution is not out. So, whoa, Rowe up into West. They hold it straight. Here comes Cole Luigi with the run. And Joe Sandroj and Luke Rainey. So as Alexander Rowe crowded the A9 off the track, he gets that lap. Blood, so that's a bonus point for him. But now the E2 up the track again. So maybe that, cl that clean air is making the cars tighter or something. <laughs> See all these leaders go up the racetrack. Kaluji takes the race lead once again. Joe Sandroge to second. Luke Ray coming back inside the top five. Eli Bright making gains. Looks like Michael Sanders also making gains as Jonathan Beeford falls back. And at the stripe, Sandroge is side by side with Luigi trying to get a nose underneath them as they hit turn one. He has that nose. And up the racetrack for the 32. Big time. Joe Sandroge takes the race lead. Luke Rainey for second. Trying to get a second win in a row. His third of the season. Eli Bright in the 88 making up ground. Up to 6th. He's going for a top 5. Sandrovich leads the lap. 11 laps of racing to go. Front 3 are non-chasers. They have about 3 or 4 chasers behind them. As Michael Sanders trying to get into the next round of the chase. It would take either a win or a great result. Right now his top 3 is a great result. But he can never be too comfortable with the win. Here at Iowa. He's trying to get up there and win. He's going for 2nd. Eli Bright, the 88, though, might spoil that party. He's coming to the inside. Ten laps of racing to go. Sandrovich has gone away, but Sanders and Eli Bright, two chasers, are gunning hard for that race lead. Eli to the bottom. Side by side with Sanders. They hit three and four. 88 car looks pretty sporty. He's been moving up through the field slowly and consistently this whole race, and here he is now. He's found himself, himself in second with under ten laps to go. Eli Bright has a chance. To steal one, but to curl again. Sanders, two cars below the cut line coming into this race. They're gunning hard their third and fourth as Eli looks for the race lead as they enter turn three. Staying patient for now. Eli to the inside. Sandrovich just doesn't want to do anything stupid here and take himself out of contention. He knows just finishing where he is, finishing anywhere in this pack really would be a good enough result to get in. He just doesn't want to crash here. Because even if he fades back there to the 09, I think, I think he would still make it. He's one of the few that had a pretty good cushion over the cutoff. Eli out front. He's going to lead a lap. The first lap he's led tonight. Bonus point for him. But the curl getting back to the inside. How about Laura Delano? Out of nowhere. That 66 has come. She's gunning for that race. They up to fourth. She's going to be going for seconds there. Three wide Eli Brent, the 88. Way up the track. Joe Sandros goes to the middle. Maybe some contact there. Laura Delano down bottom. So they're going to catch the 11 of Galway, who was slow with damage. TJ Hanley. John Gamm, may, I think maybe the 44 and the 11 might have made contact at some point in the middle of the pack. We saw the pack was spread out. They possibly made some contact. Now they're slower. Galway, how do they deal with this lap traffic? Oh, contact between DeKurlgan and Galloway. The 11 off pace, up top. At top not going to be the place to be. There's Delano and Sandrovich. Also, Eli Bright's up top. They can try and find their way to the middle lane. Try and split that 11-3 wide. Eli can have a hole down low if he wants it. He does get down in front of that 19 Juan Garcia. Now the outside lane not going to be the place to be. Delano's trying to find a way down low. Sandrovich as the field maybe spread out the front. Five laps of racing to go. And up front to Kurlgan and West. have pulled a gap th on third, fourth, and fifth. How about Jennifer Beeford? We mentioned she always finds a way up to the front at the end. Here she is inside the top five after being nothing. This whole race four to go and she's up to fourth. Where has she come from? John West for the race lead on to Kurlgan. Down the back stretch they come. John West going to try and clear. Coming to three to go. And with them being side by side, third on back, they might have a run here. Three to go at Iowa. West leads. They're curling getting back to second, but still has a shot. Jeffrey P for his third. Sanders is fourth. He needs a win. Alexander Rowe fifth. And Eli Bryant sixth. Right now, your front 
six, five of them are chasers. Now watch for DeCurl again coming back, coming to two to go. John West out front with now two laps of racing to go. Can DeCurl again run him down? Can Buford, Sanders, Eli, or Rowe get up there and have a shot? Coming to see the white flag. West has pulled a gap. The 89 car has been strong all race. He's gone out front late and coming to the white flag. He goes out the track. DeCurl on that yellow line. It's going to be settled on the final 7 eighths mile white flag. One more time around for John West, but can DeCurl again get there and close in? Into turn one. He's looking to the inside. John West held him off good as they come down the back stretch. It's going to take one final Hail Mary into turn three for James DeCurl again. He doesn't have it. West off of turn number four is dominated here. DeKurgan gunning hard. Can't get there. West wins at Iowa after dominating. The rest of the field coming across. How are these chasers doing? Who's going to advance? Eight drivers advance. Four are going to be eliminated. And we know who it's going to be. Let's go check the finishing results and the chase standings and the four who were eliminated. Here are the finish results from the Nike 300 at Iowa. There were three caution flags for 12 laps and 13 lead changes among eight different drivers. John West dominates this race in 24 laps to get to victory lane over DeKurlgan, who ends up second. Is it enough, though, to get himself into the chase? Into the next round. Jeff Beefer ends up third. Sneaky, quiet day once again. Michael Sanders in fourth. Eli Bright in fifth. Then Alexander Rowan sixth. Juan Garcia seventh. Laura Delano in eighth. Alex Stewart ninth. And Levi Shones rounds out the top ten. So there's your top 20 some drivers that were up there at the end, but got caught behind the 11th Galloway, like John Buford falls to 13th, Luke Green to 11th, Kobuji 14th, but Michael Ferris quiet day in 15th. And all these other drivers, Stan George up there, he falls to 18th after being stuck behind his teammate. Look down 21st to 40th. Let's see how many cars actually finished the race running, even with how many had damage. Jeff Bright, your pole center involved in that crash early on, falls to 33rd with damage. Tough break for him. And 40 cars finished, I'll leave that. 41 finished the race running as McDowell wrecked under the yellow flag. And at the right side of the screen, you'll see that cost him a spot in round number two of the chase. The four drivers eliminated. The 87 of Roland Cook. The 52 of Gatlin Downey. Along with the 16 of Adam McDowell. And the 7 of Isaac Nichols. The drivers advancing on. Jennifer B. with 117 points. Eli Bright with 105 points. Levi Schultz had 99 points. Alexander Rowe had 96 points, John Buford with 94, Michael Sanders got up to 90 points, and Justin Heath had 86, and James Carrigan had 82. Those were the eight drivers advancing. It wasn't even really close. I mean, nine points separated uh, DeCurlgan from the cutoff, so it wasn't really that close. But now, points are reset. Uh, each driver gets the chase points they had originally. So Jennifer's going to have 30 chase points to start this round. Eli with 17, Heath with 14, uh, Alexander with 10, Shones with 6, Sanders with 5, DeCurl again with 5, and Jonathan with 5 as well. So some big names, Adam McDowell and Isaac Nichols both had 10 chase points, both eliminated. But uh, two with 5 chase points, Cook and Downey were both eliminated as well. Ronald Cook just did not have the speed throughout the whole uh this whole first round of the chase and really just did not have the finishes. Downey had one good finish, but two bad finishes plagued him in the points. And then McDowell, of course, had some had a two bad finishes. That's what knocked him out. And Isaac Nichols had one good or one bad finish and two pretty consistent finishes, but still not enough. You need those chase points. Jeff Beaufort showed that she had one bad race, but those chase points covered for that, and she kept the points lead. So the next race, the first round. Or the first race of round number two is at Pensacola for the can and 300. That one's going to be a wild one, as that could determine a lot for this next round. See you guys then.